Yeah, but he he knew he was going to reap the benefits eventually, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You, you he reaped the you benefits want... the whole time because <laughs> oh, you have okay. to practice a lot of recipes. You want to know how uh, important <laughs> cooking is to Mary Ellen? She knew that coming to our house to stay, it's like, I don't want to be picky, Chris. I don't want to, you know, have these meals. So if you don't mind, I'll just cook all of our meals while you're, we're so there. So how's that got? It's good. It it's good? good. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. I, well, we've shared in the cooking, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, Chris has done her part, of course. Well, I and guess, we, but, I mean, right. by we how's still, that gone, I, I'm warming. How's it taste? Welcome to How I See It with me, Mark Pratt, and Justin Sternberg. This is a podcast that works to counter cultural polarization through thoughtful conversations. <laughs> All right, we're back from our break. Yes, indeed. So speaking along the lines of what your husband went through, um, is it fair to say that of the a whole food plant-based lifestyle has become a passion for you based on what you've experienced yes a mission yeah. to share yeah yeah how do you share yeah so a lot of it is just um you know at first i was sharing my journey and mm -hmm. i got questions yeah so i mean within a few months of our transition i had several other friends that also went that direction and started to transform their health as well. Hmm. Um, as things went along, I decided to try a, um, and cause I would get a lot of questions on cooking. So mm -hmm. I love to cook. Mm -hmm. And this spring I actually completed culinary school, plant-based culinary oh, cool. school, which was mm -hmm. a lifelong dream for me. Was fun? Neat. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's awesome. And my husband suffered through all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he he knew he was going to reap the benefits eventually, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You, you he reaped know, the you benefits wanna... the whole time because <laughs> oh, you have okay. to practice a lot of recipes. You want to know how uh, <laughs> important cooking is to Mary Ellen? She knew that coming to our house to stay, it's like, I don't want to be picky, Chris. I don't want to, you know, have these meals. So if you don't mind, I'll just cook all of our meals while you're, we're <laughs> so there. How's that got? It's good. It it's good? good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, well, we've shared in the cooking, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, Chris has done her part, of course. Well, I guess, and we, but, I mean, by we how's still... that gone, I, I'm warming. How's it taste? I would like to try. Yeah, I mean, we've, we, what were the, <laughs> I, I, the yeah. I call them the like, buffalo like, bean burgers, but they're the black bean burgers. Yeah, they were a black bean burger. Cause, cause nice. they're kind of, kind of orange. So I kind of, you know, yeah, the yeah. buffalo style, you know, uh, like, yeah. A, but, um, yeah, they were very good. Oatmeal, corn, mm -hmm. black bean. It was, it was good. Yeah. And so, nice. yeah, it's like, I think it's, is it fair to say that there hasn't been any, you haven't felt any resistance? Not from my husband at all. No. Well, he's, even from in our household as well. No, what I'm I haven't. And okay. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. We can get into a little bit of the obstacles here because that's definitely something I think it's worth talking about. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to remember what your original question was. I don't know either. It had to do with people, <laughs> you know, as you're. Oh, in, how did I share? So, yeah. oh, you share. Um, yeah. So the next step for me was a little over a year ago because I was getting a lot of questions. Um, and I'm not a great, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of using a lot of social media. I'm a very mm -hmm. in-person. And so people started to get a little more comfortable with being together, you know, mm -hmm. a year ago. So I, I just thought, I'm going to try and see if I can just put together a little cooking class. So I just mm. put it out there on Facebook and I said, would anybody be interested? And there was quite a few. So every three or four weeks, I was, um, for the last year, I've done a cooking class in my home. And it's cool. been very informal, but um, people have really come to love it. So I, you know, I put together, usually it's a theme based. Mm. So we might do like breakfast and I have recipes all printed out for everybody and some of it is actual cooking the food in front of them. And some of it's, I already have some of the things made. And so there's a lot of sampling and in that questions and answers, whatever people. So it's just, it's a hands-on approach to teaching. And hmm. um, I've also done some of those in the community as well. I was asked by another nonprofit locally if I would come in and do them in their community. Um, and that was the first time teaching to mm. strangers, people mm. I didn't know. And that was a lot of fun as well. And um, and now I'm taking that the next step. I just started last night, actually, um, 
working with a, an organization called Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, mm -hmm. and I'm being educated um, for to be a Food for Life educator, and it's a licensure program, and so you teach um, disease reversal and mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. just lifestyle medicine in the community, and so I'm super excited to be a part of that program, so that'll, that'll expand... Mm -hmm. Um, the air, the people that I can work with, and I'll also have the credentials to go with it. So, nice. so cool. Yeah, yeah. I know. And Mary Beth was on here. I was trying to get her to start a podcast or a blog. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I'll, there's a I'll lot of them out there for plant, the plant based community. I mean, that yeah. was honestly uh, my lifeline. Yeah, yeah. So, as you've embarked on this journey, can you speak to some of the obstacles that you faced in a, in such a way that might help others? Right. And I would say my obstacles may be someone's, but I think other people have different ones as well because we sure. all have our own journey. For me, the actual transition and the cooking part was not an obstacle for me, but it mm. is for a lot of people. Mm. I just had mm. to equip myself. Um, mm. And if anybody wants to go down that direction, there is quite a few um, YouTubers and bloggers that mm. put out wonderful recipes and inspiring videos and things that really help you. You know, I never thought I'd be watching somebody's what I eat in a day videos, but they have been very helpful because mm -hmm. a lot of it is just getting your head around what does it look like on your plate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the beginning I was like, you know, you remove the chicken, what are you putting there? And so I was always trying to add a protein, come back to that, mm -hmm. onto my plate where now I'm just learning there are a lot of things that we eat that are plant-based all the time we don't think about, you mm -hmm. know, so beans just... and rice or a chili or a curry, you know, there's a lot of things. A lot of what we eat is just the, it's the flavor of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So if someone is moving that direction or wants to just explore it, there are, and there's, there's bloggers and YouTubers that are in books that are geared towards certain ethnic groups as well, as mm -hmm. far as the types of cooking. Um, and I've done a little bit of all of it, and mm. it's been, it's delicious. There's nothing mm. you're missing I'm along the hungry. way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would say for, for me, for us, my husband and I, it, the biggest obstacle has been the social piece of it. Mm. Um, mm. People do not understand, our, our society isn't supportive of it as far as even restaurants and things. So there mm. are some areas of the country that you would find more places to go. Um, like California or Cal yeah and some know, like I mean, around DC the cities you tend yeah, to yeah, have yeah. more mm -hmm. and even now like here we were looking at you mm -hmm. know even so you can find maybe vegan food but it's not necessarily healthy um, and I'm not so strict that I won't occasionally um, eat out and eat something that is so the other component of a whole food plant-based diet I should sp specify is no oil which is a completely different thing mm -hmm. for most people wow. it's no yeah. oil mm -hmm. and there's some people that use so there's no it's no processed things so oil is a processed food um, there are um, some people that do include um, some olive oil in their diet mm -hmm. but in general most people are oil free and a lot of people also go salt free as well <laughs> Um, I, we just I, lost Justin. I know. I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> so it's, again, like, it depends makes... on what you're doing it for too, right? I mean, salt yeah. is sodium in our mm. diet. It's a huge part of people's health decline as well. Mm. Um, but usually it's in the processed food because there's so much sodium in it. So it's additional sodium or all sodium, would you say? We, we need some sodium. Okay. But sodium is in food. Mm -hmm. celery all sorts of foods have sodium in them mm -hmm. but it's the it's all the additives of and you know even if you're not eating out and not eating processed food and you're adding salt from a salt shaker you're going to not get it's not going to be too much it's mm -hmm. when we buy you know you think you know one takeout meal has more sodium than you should eat in a day mm -hmm. and a lot of people are eating takeout two and three times a day sure. um, so I, I think we need to stop and look at what we're eating, you know, but to that, the, the society does not, is not real supportive of the infrastructure for a plant-based diet as far as eating out and eating other people, social things. Mm -hmm. That has been the hardest. Some of it has been with family, to be honest. Um, the first Thanksgiving was the pandemic and we didn't get together with everybody. So that wasn't an issue, but wow, the second one, mm -hmm. boy, it mm -hmm. was difficult. Not for me. I was fine with eating my other things that I made. Um, mm -hmm. You can still eat mashed potatoes and 
there's a lot of great things. You just make them differently. Sure. Um, and the food is still delicious, but it's different. Mm -hmm. And we have tradition. So yeah. mm. um, my mom had a really hard time. Mm. You know, why are... Not only was I not eating the food, I um, I wasn't making it anymore. Um, so part of that journey for me has been mm -hmm. not doing that. Um, I Food is a, a communication of love for a lot of people, including myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I've fed mm -hmm. people, given people food, made baked for people for most of my life as gifts and a, you know, a form of nurturing. And I had to really shift what that looked like. Because mm. for me, it's not loving to give somebody something that's not healthy for them. Mm. So, you know, if someone has diabetes, you, you don't gift them fudge, you know? I mean, it's just not loving in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's their favorite thing, yeah. it's not it's not beneficial to their health. Well, So that's my personal I mean, it's feeling. not that different from other addictions. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> right? I, and like I think, if someone yeah. really likes weed, you probably right. shouldn't just give it to them as a gift, would be my guess. Right. Or and so, I mean, you know. <laughs> alcohol, like they're an alcoholic, they're in recovery. Right. You know what? I brought you a six pack as a gift right, because but, I know how much you love it. But I will tell you, yeah. that is not how it's looked at. So it is an addiction, mm -hmm. um, but it's not supported in our society. So. I want us to think about that for a minute. If we are, say someone is, was, is a recovering alcoholic, would you be like, oh, come on, man, just have a beer. Like, well, well you'd be surprised. I'm, actually, I do know sadly. what happens, but is that loving? No. Like a true friend right. would not do that. Right. But, hmm. you know, right. someone that has ripped hmm. off that band aid, they've transitioned, they've turned their health around with a plant-based diet and they're in a social setting and people guilt them. Yeah. But I made you this cake and how can you not eat it? And it's, mm. it's, it's very real and the pressure is real. And I know so many people mm. that do not stay true to what they're doing because of the social pressures. Mm. It was helpful that my husband is plant-based. That is yeah. huge. Sure. Um, yeah. I am a very disciplined person when it comes to just because I've had to be in order to get better. And that would not have changed what I was doing in my home. But it would have made it more difficult. Sure. And it would have made it more difficult when we were going out. It's nice that we're on the same page. Yeah. So I have to think ahead, plan ahead. And that was part of my conversation um, with Chris and Mark. Um, I, I talked to Chris ahead of time because I don't want to offend people. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to offend people. I've realized that it's it runs very deep for people and they can be offended. And so I just wanted to say, like, I don't want to offend you. Um, but is it okay if I do my own cooking or, you know, because I understand it's, it's people also don't want to bend over backwards to, to try to figure it out. It, mm -hmm. it seems complicated. It doesn't have to be, but um, it is different. It's different. And I, I appreciate what you share in that uh, you can communicate love by cooking for people. And I think so often we misunderstand as of our love of food, right? There's a big difference between loving food and communicating love by cooking for right. others. And I think, you know, I appreciate that dynamic and that aspect of the communication you shared right. because you wanted to convey a love and say, hey, we respect that we're different. And yet there's a desire to love and care for and, you know, and to avoid that defensiveness, if you will, that can go along with, yeah, well, what are we doing? Well, we love this food, you know, what makes that wrong right. for you? And I think that's right. that's what, mm -hmm. you know, you, you battle or, you know, part of that obstacle is that misunderstanding, right. if you will. And it's been a real eye opener, to be honest with you, because we, where are our priorities as a culture mm -hmm. and also how we treat others in this and you know, even as a, as a Christian woman, um, you know, I, how often if we, you know, we've heard, we've been told and we know we need to care for our temples. We need to take care of our bodies. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think most people want to do that. We want to be feeling well and, and able to live our life to the fullest. And, but if we're given the tools and the wisdom when we choose to not do that, um, you know, I just love my bacon. I couldn't do that. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to die of heart disease. It's mm -hmm. what are we saying in that? 
And I think, you know, that's going to step on some people's toes, but yeah, this has been my, in this room. No, right? no, kidding, I, yeah. no, but I, I just, you know, we really have to, if we love, we love that food mm. over our quality of life. Mm -hmm. So people will say it's so hard. I'm like, so is being sick. Being mm -hmm. sick is hard. Diabetes is hard. Heart disease is hard. Mm -hmm. Lyme disease is hard. Being sick is really difficult. It does. It affects every mm -hmm. single aspect of your life. So yes, eating plant-based affects every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. So when we go places, we pack food mm -hmm. everywhere. We rarely eat out at restaurants because there's not much availability where we live. Um, when we go to people's houses, it can be a little awkward. Um, people don't necessarily want to host us for dinner always because they don't know what to make. And so I've had mm -hmm. to learn to be proactive and have conversations and be gracious and mm -hmm. understanding of that. Because food is such a big it is. social component it is. Uh, of our lives. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is. In fact, maybe the biggest in terms of social, social yeah, interactions. Possibly religion. Yeah. Gatherings. Yeah, underneath that, yeah. yeah, I would say. Yeah. And it's, Cause, yeah, and you don't have to give any of that up. It's just different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just different, yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, you don't have yeah, the turkey on the Thanksgiving table. But it's mm -hmm. still Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Like, can we give thanks mm -hmm. for yeah, things differently? Yeah, because Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a, a broader conversation that ties into uh, tradition, which yeah. I think is worth having as well. But just how we we replace the original thing with the tradition and say this is the original thing, or you know, we kind of this is Thanksgiving what it is. is this turkey. And it's like, right. wait a second, remember what the word is? It's about thanks. It's about giving mm -hmm. things. Or Thanksgiving right? is about Black Friday and shopping. Right. You know? Yes, right. we've absolutely, and so. This has been a deep journey. It it hasn't it's it's only started with the food. Yeah. And then it's caused a lot of uh deeper thinking on my part. Mm -hmm. And and also in that is the direction of, you know, the other pieces that come into that because once you're in the plant-based world, there's the discussion of the environment and animal welfare and all of those things and it just opens up all of these this awareness. And once you have awareness of things, you can't put that awareness away. You mm -hmm. know it. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. I just see the world differently now than I did three years ago. And mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that, but it also makes it hard. There's a tension in that because mm -hmm. it's hard for me to watch somebody that is o suffering. They're overweight. Mm -hmm. They don't feel well. And yeah, there they are filling their plate with all these unhealthy things that are just, it's just fuel to that illness mm -hmm. and not insert myself in that. I'm I'm thinking I'm not this isn't a defensive statement or anything but I'm thinking about it you know as we mentioned you know antibiotics and animals I'm I'm going to that other end of the spectrum of saying you know pesticides and foods mm -hmm. and you know typically foods are you know uh, the the three chemicals in in fertilizer what is it potash and you know sodium right. and phosphate you know that kind right. of you know that we can give we can give plants just those three things and they don't necessarily have the nutrient broadness that we're looking. How do you personally kind of overcome that to where you're not just, you know, consuming food that's deplete of the right. rest of the nutrients that our bodies actually need? How do right. we understand that from your perspective? So I'll just, let me dispel a few myths. Sure. Go for it. Okay. So one of the things that comes out there is that they're, um, Plants are not complete amino acid profile. Okay. So when people say, well, they're not complete proteins, that is a myth. Okay. Hmm. Plants all have, every plant has every amino acid in it. It is an absolute myth. Hmm. Um, plants also contain protein. Gotcha. And it, it doesn't even have to be intentional. You don't have to hmm. be like, I need to eat three cups of beans a day. Um, it is all plants have protein in them. Gotcha. Um, oatmeal has as much protein as eggs. Broccoli has protein in it. Sure. Um, and they also have most of the things that animals get from plants. So animals get their sources from plants. Mm, sure. So one of the things people say is we're, you know, like omega-3s. And so they get with a fish oil, right? Well, fish get it from the algae. Mm. So go to the source. So part mm. of the whole food plant-based diet is go to the source. Go to sure. the source of things. And so a plant-based diet... There is any 
any diet can have its deficiency, right? So one of the things I will say up front is B12. B12 is deficient in a vegan diet. A lot of omnivores also are missing B12, but B12 comes from the soil, bacteria mm. in the soil, which then gets eaten by the animals, which then you get from them. But our soil is too clean now, so we don't get it from the soil. So mm. you have to supplement with B12. And most people need vitamin D, but that has nothing to do with a plant-based diet. That's just, um, people get it from their milk sure. because it's added to the milk. Correct. Mm -hmm. So there are some plant-based milk alternatives that have it added, but most people just choose to supplement. Other than that, a plant-based diet, a well-rounded one, mm. has everything that you need, even if you don't eat a drop of it organic. Gotcha. So a traditional grown plant-based diet will have all that you need, and it's better and healthier for you than a mm. standard American diet by far. Mm. But it's not good. You know, there are the issues of other things that come into play. And obviously, if you can purchase organic and be more strategic in how you're doing things, buy local, all of those things play a role. And they mm. certainly play a role. In my situation, I was, you know, eating a lot of dark leafy greens and I did make sure they were organic because I wasn't going to trade one thing off for another. And there are a lot of pesticides on our mm. foods. And I, um, I, I'm very intentional about certain foods that I buy only organic, um, such if as? possible. Such as? So I use the um, Environmental Workings Group Dirty Dozen list. And mm. on that list, on the top, every time is strawberries. Okay. They are right up there. And that is one thing I do not... St they have like over 40 different chemicals on mm. standard grown strawberries. That's they it. are... That's it. It's... <laughs> I know. Um, so there's, you know, one, you know, there's a lot of myths out there. Another big thing that I hear is it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And, um, that is not true. Um, mm -hmm. and overall, uh, a plant-based diet is 20% less expensive than a standard diet, but it depends on what you're eating. Mm -hmm. And that's true of a regular diet, right? Sure. I mean, are you buying blueberries that are out of season in the little tiny carton or are you buying them frozen you know uh, how are you how what are you buying mm -hmm. and um it that's you know beans are very inexpensive as mm -hmm. well as a lot of the grains and potatoes i mean these are things that cultures oatmeal, all the right? what oatmeal is cheap oatmeal right? is very inexpensive the cultures the cultures in the world that are most plant-based are also the poorest cultures in the world mm -hmm. so most 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 things in a plant-based diet are, I mean, there's certain vegetables, absolutely. And, and the more fresh produce you're buying out of season, the more expensive it's going mm -hmm. to be. But frozen vegetables, frozen fruit, grains, beans, all those things are um, definitely less expensive than cheese and meat overall. Wow. Yeah. So you can definitely do it on a budget. So you see that for the, for you and your husband, you see this as being long-term. This is going to be a Yeah, there's lifestyle. no turning back. We, yeah. we have no intention of ever um, going off of a plant-based diet. It, it will be the way we live for the rest of our lives. And um, I, 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 speaking to just the future of, a, of our culture, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. going to be moving that way because people's health is, we're going to get to a tipping point. Mm. And um, a plant-based diet is the answer to most health mm. issues. Um, Eighty percent of chronic disease can be completely eliminated mm. on a plant-based diet, just gone. It wouldn't exist, which is a good portion of the deaths in the U.S. Like, so you uh, you made the bold claim, and we're going to mm. reach a tipping point. What what in your mind would trigger that? And, and what would trigger that? And what would the result look like as a result of that? Yeah. So I, the, honestly, there's going to be two things. It's either going to be people's personal health, um, just taking a, you know, right now, this generation, us, we're going to die at a younger age than the last. Well, isn't that what we just heard this week that the, 
first and I'm, uh, I'm yeah, trying to the remember first time this, this will be the first we're going backwards time. yeah we're despite going despite all of our modern yeah. things because it's we interesting can't that the undo the damage we can't undo the damage hmm. the second well, what was the 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 fat the the statistic is this is the first time that the, the longevity is, is going is, backwards. is yeah. lower than it was previously yeah. the uh the but what's the exact, life expectancy life expectancy yeah, yeah. Yes. thank you man <laughs> It's like, what are the words? I need the words. My brain won't move on until I have, like, sorry. No, that's absolutely. <laughs> and so the longest living people in the world are, if not exclusively plant-based, mm -hmm. they are primarily plant-based. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. been studies, the blue zones um, are the mm -hmm. longest living people in the world. And they're, they may eat very small amounts of um, seafood or uh, a little bit of cheese here and there, but it's mm. it's little. Um, in America, we eat 200, 220 pounds of meat a year per person, mm. 55 pounds of cheese. That's not even seafood. Um, the average American eats at least 40%, if not 60% of processed food in their diet. Um, Less than 10% plants, and the majority of that is potatoes made into French fries. <laughs> <laughs> Processed. So yeah. something's going to have to change. The other piece of this that most people are completely unaware of is the environmental impact um, yeah. that animal agriculture has had. Mm -hmm. And we are not 100, mm -hmm. 200 years from not being able to live on this planet. We are mm -hmm. 40 or 50 years from not being able to mm -hmm. survive as we are on this planet, if we do not make changes, because animal agriculture is killing our soil mm. and emitting a lot of greenhouse gas. I am not saying that every single person needs to go vegan. We do need to shift. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to shift away from all 220 pounds of meat a year. Like we just, our, our lifestyle cannot, our planet cannot sustain it. Mm. And the sad thing is that if we went plant-based, we could feed the whole world. Yeah. Because there would be enough food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to, to so. grow uh, to grow what's needed to feed the world requires a lot less footprint yes. than what's required. It, for so the environmental raising. footprint of a hamburger versus right. um, a bean burger is mm -hmm. is huge, and I, I really encourage people to look into it because you know we we are aware. I'll take a shorter shower or you know, turn off your lights. Um, we're all about getting a Tesla and driving this electric car or whatever, mm -hmm. but we, do we think about what we're putting on our plate? And the biggest thing that we can do to reduce our environmental footprint is to take animals off our plates. Mm -hmm. They, they, the environmental footprint of beef and dairy is so huge. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I think we just need to think, think about it. So that tipping point is that, and I hope and pray that we have an awakening before there's just some things that just take so long. I mean, just think about my health, you know, what if I had done this 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. So it's take it. Our planet is the same way, like restoring what we've done and the damage we've done. Mm -hmm. um, there is a tipping point. And so I'm very encouraged by the the youth and their desire to make changes for the planet. I just mm -hmm. hope the truth comes out. And right now, a lot of it is being hidden by follow the money trail. There is no big broccoli, mm -hmm. <laughs> but there is a dairy council mm -hmm. and a poultry council and a beef council. Mm -hmm. And but there is no big broccoli. So there's no agenda in the plant-based movement, especially the whole food plant-based movement, because we're not selling anything. Mm. Health. Health. Is what? But there's no, there's it, no, yeah. there's, there's, because anything that's sold has to have someone backing behind it. You mm. know, you can grow your own food. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can anyhow. No doubt. But, hmm. Yeah. Based on this conversation, as with other guests that have just a wealth of information, I'd love to get a list of resources from you. Uh, a few of the things that stand out is like, uh, like food resources. Right. You mentioned uh, food bloggers and or even some videos where they yeah, talk about yeah. There's great documentaries out the there. Day. Yeah, one of them I can list right off the top that you two would probably both enjoy. Mm. Um, 
is on not to give Netflix any more business, but Netflix has a documentary um, called The Game Changers, mm-hmm. and it's been their number one documentary ever watched, and it's very entertaining as well. Nice. So, but there's a lot of free things on um, YouTube as well. Forks Over Knives is on there. That one. Um, in my meeting last night, probably half the people discovered a plant-based diet through Forks Over Knives. Hmm. So, yeah, and I, I just want people to know that um, there is there is hope, and change can be hard, but it's hmm. worth it. Sure. Yeah. So you That's know, good. I think there's there's a lot of people suffering with health issues, mm-hmm. and um, there are answers. Yeah. And as with anything like this, it it's difficult to get started. And it, the best thing that you can do is find some resources, find right. some mm-hmm. um, support. You know what I mean? Sure. Support. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's huge. And I will say one thing I love about the plant-based community is there's a lot of free resources. There's mm-hmm. a lot of free support. There is, you know, free Kickstart programs um, and a lot of free resources out there. Um, so I will definitely be glad to provide those to you cool yeah we'll uh, we'll put like some a pdf together of resources and be able to share that with listeners yeah well well on behalf of us thank you mary ellen appreciate yeah. the Thanks time for having me. appreciate the information and appreciate you sharing how you see it hey thank you for listening to our podcast If you like how I see it, please do all the things that podcasts tell you to do. Subscribe, rate, review, follow us, uh, and or talk nicely about us on social media. If you want to reach out, the email is us at howiseeit.click. Yep, I said dot click, as in dot C-L-I-C-K. Please tell your friends about this show, and we'll see you on the next one.